My name is Dr. Dora Thornton and I'm the curator of Renaissance Europe at the British Museum. I'm also the curator of the BP special exhibition, Shakespeare, Staging the World. And what we want to do in this exhibition for 2012, the year in which the world comes to London, is to show how the world came to London 400 years ago through the lens of Shakespeare's plays. What we're doing is using objects from Shakespeare's real world and to take you very directly to the issues that matter to Shakespeare and his original audiences. And with the help of the collaboration of the RSC, the first time we've ever collaborated with a theatre company, we want to bring elements of performance into the heart of the exhibition. What we're going to do now is look in lots more detail at three of the objects in the exhibition, which the Art Fund has helped to acquire and explain their relevance to Shakespeare's world, what they tell us about the world that Shakespeare experienced. So the first object is called a valance. In a sense, we still have valances, which we use on, on modern beds. But this is actually a long piece of textile which goes around the top of a bedstead. The characters that appear, both hunting and the talking lovers in pairs and couples, have stepped straight out of the Forest of Arden in As You Like It. And there's that strong sense of nostalgia, of a lost world, of a, of a place which is a better place than modern society, which is a very strong theme in many of Shakespeare's plays and comedies in particular. The Art Fund helped to acquire it for the Victorian Albert Museum in 1934 and it's been there on display in their British galleries but they only show a small section of it. So in this exhibition you can see it in all its glory. This portrait of John Donne, which was acquired with the help of the Art Fund for the National Portrait Gallery in 2006, is an incredible thing to include in the exhibition and it's been specially conserved for the exhibition for which we're very grateful. It shows John Donne as the ultimate melancholy lover. That was a fashionable condition. If you were a young man, particularly in Shakespeare's world, there was a wish to cultivate the pose of the melancholy lover. It showed that you were thoughtful, that you were a contemplative, that you were a little bit independent-minded, that you were perhaps um, out of tune with contemporary society. In other words, something very recognisable today, I think, for many young people and adolescents who are finding their own way. So it's a very interesting construction, all of his own making, as to how to present himself. And it's Hamlet to the life. I've, I'm sure this is, you know, when people saw Hamlet on stage, they're thinking very much of this kind of melancholy person. The third object is very, very different. Um, it's a tourist album uh, made up for a young Scottish nobleman, Sir Michael Balfour, on the equivalent of the Grand Tour. In 1596, he was in Italy, in northern Italy, which was even then a very fashionable place for young Englishmen to go. And there was already that love affair with Venice that's so strong in the English and British imagination. Um, and this leaf is absolutely fascinating because it shows at first sight the picture postcard view of the classic Venetian beauty. And what's really extraordinary about this is that you can lift the flap of her dress like a voyeur and underneath she's wearing immense breeches and teetering platform shoes, extremely high platform shoes. And so this object, I think, takes you to the heart of that sort of questioning about women and their virtue, which is so much a feature of the way that Shakespeare's audiences viewed Venice in particular.